Okay, so I've moved into the other room so that we cut out a little bit of the bird chatter. <laughs> and we'll continue on with the, um, the Nichananda um, question and answers. And this next one will be of interest to people on this path, being that this is a Kundalini path. I have not heard these prior to this, uh, so um, I, I'm just now hearing this, and uh, I will be doing a running commentary on it as it plays out, and I hope this benefits others out there. So let's see what the next question <laughs> has uh, in store for us. This time I'm not going to um, uh, re-verbalize what he is saying um, because I think it's if people listen, they can catch it good enough in playing back the first one. I see that it is quite um, able to be followed, so that will cut down some of the time on the videos. So let's let's continue forward. The next question is from Zuzana, IA number 16, who is saying, Dearest Swamiji, please specify and clarify these three terms, Kundalini awakening, third eye opening, enlightenment, and how exactly is each of these phases manifested in the body? Thank you. Zuzana, it's a very funny question. She's asking, Please specify and clarify these three terms. Kundalini awakening, third eye opening, enlightenment. I can say Kundalini awakening is like a first step. Your body starts responding to the highest auspicious presence. Third eye opening is like your body, your biomemory is connected to the highest auspicious presence presence. Enlightenment is like becoming one with that auspicious presence. It's like a, you getting up and moving the screen is Kundalini awakening. Seeing what is there on the other side is third eye opening. Becoming one with the other side is enlightenment. So in Kundalini awakening, bio memory feels the heat of the consciousness. In third eye opening, bio memory feels connected to the conscious presence. In enlightenment, bio memory becomes one with the conscious presence. Being in his presence awakens Kundalini. Working with his presence awakens third eye opening, becoming his presence, his enlightenment. If I had to put it more precisely, in this inner awakening, I am working more on the third eye opening than Kundalini awakening. Okay, so we'll stop it there. He's working more on thin third eye opening than Kundalini awakening. Well, if the Kundalini is not awake, you're not going to get a third eye opening. And in this path, we don't focus on third eye because what is that? That connects you with astral realms and all of that other drama. As uh, Ramana said rightly, one should remain in the heart. One can get lost in phenomena forever. Okay, so that's what you get when you get third eye awakenings. You're wanting to, to go to phenomena, endless phenomena. You know, with Kundalini awakenings, you get lights, you get all this phenomena, you get the cities that come up, and all of these things have to be bypassed. It's not about developing city powers, none of that. A city yoga is one that has gone beyond the cities, not one that attempts to develop them. 
one has to bypass that in order to get to realization. And that is why here there is no focus on third eye stuff. Because again, that's astral realms. That's a lot of projection. That is not the end point. And again, without a Kundalini awakening, you're not going to get a third eye awakening even. Okay? Once Kundalini is awakened, it goes through the consciousness. It dredges up all of the things that have been remained hidden there for centuries in eons of one's um, travels. Okay, so this is what Kundalini is there to do. It's to traverse all these different uh, realms and levels of consciousness, layers of consciousness, to clean them out, to get one to bypass and go through each of those until one goes back into the heart center and merges into realization. Connection with guru aids if you are connected with a guru that happens to be a kundalini adept that happens to be a kundalini master can and does awaken kundalini okay before one gets to awakening kundalini one needs to understand what it is how to remain in balance and how to go forward without getting trapped in third eye realms of astral projections and all that comes with that. So many hear about third eye, third eye, third eye. Absolutely not advised. Again, because it's astral realms and one can project as much phenomena as there are grains of sands on the beach. That is not going to take one to realization. So I will go ahead and continue this and see what else he has to say. Uh, if there's anything of value or not in this, and we will continue to look at this. This way, less shaking, more transformation. The body movement outside is lot less, but inside is too much. How many of you feel that outside it is not shaking much, but inside it is unbearable going through in the spine? So we okay, he's talking about outside you're not going to have much, but you're going to feel a lot inside. Well, that's not always true. In a kundalini awakening, once it's awakened, then one begins to have the spontaneous mudras, the spontaneous kriyas, the things that are taught in hatha yoga. In a genuine kundalini awakening, these things do not need to be taught. And this, again, is putting the cart before the horse. These hatha yoga postures are an outcome of kundalini. They're not something one has to put in place before Kundalini. And again, when Kundalini is awakened and one begins to start to have those types of postures, the Hatha Yoga and the mudras that come along with it, the spontaneous verbalizations, etc. At that point, I say, if you have been taking a Kundalini yoga class, and, and please, for God's sakes, if people are taking yoga classes, do not do the pranayama that they're doing because it's very unbalanced, very ungrounded, and can really cause a lot of detriment to one that is actually going through a Kundalini awakening, you know. So again, you know, he's saying you have a lot of internal stuff. And yes, there is a lot of stuff that happens internally. You can sit there and feel like you're being shaken by a, uh, an earthquake, etc. And you'll find out nothing's going on, that it's all internal. So yes, these things do happen, but also things happen externally as well. So let's see if he gets to that point, if he brings that out, if he doesn't. very clear it's third eye opening so this whole inner awakening i'm working more on the third eye opening i'm not encouraging the body movement much 
but programming less moment more transformation okay again he says he's working on third eye i'm not encouraging body movement nobody encourages it this is not to say oh let's see how many body movements you can make this is something that spontaneously takes place so again Let's look at this realistically. This is part of the motion. He's trying to awaken third eye. I'm working to awaken heart. Because like Ramana says, one has to go through all the way up and back into the heart. One rests in the heart. One doesn't rest in the third eye. The third eye is not realization. If he thinks that getting to the third eye is realization, he is sadly, sadly, sadly mistaken. The third eye connects one to astral realms. Again, the world of dreams, the world of fantasy, the world of duality. That is not the end point by any means. So let's continue to see what he has to say. He wants to connect you to third eye. I want to connect you to heart center. Less shaking, more shocking. <laughs> Next question. Um, that's all he has to say of it. Less shaking, more shocking. What's he going to shock? Yes, you'll be shocked if you're staying here. It's not taking you to realization, not by any stretch of the imagination. And this is where people get stuck. And this is what they want to continue to promote. More and more phenomena. I see endless kundalini, supposed to be kundalini gurus, and that's where their focus is. That's where they've stopped. They haven't gone beyond that. They know nothing beyond that. And that's leaving you really in a place of projection you don't want to be. A lot of fantasy, a lot of hype, a lot of phenomena, but it's not realization. Again, absolutely not. So has he talked about taking it from here to go up to the Sahasrara? Has he talked about that? No, he's going to leave you here. Okay, he's not talking about going up. He's not talking about bringing it back down to the heart where this Brahman, this point of Brahman is. Okay, he's not talking about any of that. He's going to leave you stranded. He's working on opening the third eye. So you can have a lot of projected images, a lot of drama, a lot of imbalance, and I can guarantee I've seen the, the pranayam he's given, and this is why I went to see him, because the pranayam he is giving is dangerous. That is what I went to talk to him about. So Nietzschean on the people, you want to know why I went there? You want to know why I had a one-to-one -one with him and why I told him to get rid of his people, that this was not a photo op for him, that I was coming there? I would not allow any cameras there because I said, I'm here to talk to you guru to guru. And I'm here to tell you what you are giving to these people is dangerous. Oh, well, I'll take care of it later. That was his answer to me. Oh, well, I'll take care of it later. You don't take care of it later. That was such an irresponsible answer. Irresponsible and shows he has no knowledge of what he is doing. He is in illusion. He is in delusion. He is not where he thinks he is. He is by no means a realized being. He has not completed the journey. Otherwise, he would have never made that statement. So I'm here to uncover the truth. I'm here to lay it out point blank and to dispel these notions. Now, if you want to hear it, you want to say, I'm full of it, fine. Say, I'm full of it. Stay there. Be there. 
but when you become imbalanced and you're not going forward, remember what's been said. So he's ended that. That's all he's saying on Kundalini. What is Kundalini? How it manifests in the body. He didn't even talk about Kriyas. He didn't talk about Mudras. He spoke about none of it. Oh, you'll feel some heat and shaking, maybe. That's it. That's it. And a lot of times, you know, they will talk people into this feeling of stuff. You know, what in imagination. Because I guarantee when it's a genuine Kundalini awakening, you are not imagining. You're not trying to make it happen. Spontaneous Kriyas are going to take place. Spontaneous Mudras are going to take place. This is the way it is. It's not something manufactured. It's not something that one puts in place before. This is the way that it happens. As far as enlightenment, yes, it is a merging into that Brahman, that part of Brahman. But in that point, when one merges into that, you are no more. It's like a sugar cube dissolving. That sugar cube, you know, is gone. What was there in that consciousness before? All the past experience one had is as nothing. All the past life is as nothing. I have never been born. I have never died. I am that one eternal, pure is, before birth, beyond death. That is what is. That is what I am. And this is what is referenced. And this is what remains. And though people at that point think they are talking to, you know, a person that's in the same consciousness as them, and though we are speaking in duality, the consciousness has been absorbed into this non-dual state. And if one remains, if one is in truly in realization, they will be in a state of nirvakalpa sahaj samadhi. There will be no more yammering mind. There will be none of that. That has passed. That has gone. All of those projections have ended. At that point, all of the other phenomena that surrounds Kundalini has ended. It has been absorbed back into Brahman. There is no more externally going outward. It's all come back in and rests and remains there in that stillness, in that still point of absolute clarity and awareness. So <clears throat> I will close this part out on uh, the Kundalini. Okay, you can hear it from there, or you can come and have a little bit more clarity. This is for my devotees, my sadhakas, and for those that want to, to want to hear. So namaste.